Good morning. We're back uh, behind the brush today. Today we're going to be making a little departure from tonal values, although they'll still play a role in our painting, and we're going to be thinking more about looking at your subject in terms of shape. Our motif is uh, fish shacks on the water. This is an image that we'll be working from, and this image is good for us because it really shows uh, the shapes very clearly, both the shapes of the fish shacks and the reflections. In fact, the artist tries to look at their subject when they're in front of their subject and see the connections in shapes. And this little alteration in the image shows that we can look at the shape of the shacks and the reflections and the rocks almost as one shape. This gives us an advantage when beginning our painting or thinking about our composition. Um, However, we're starting the painting with a couple of important washes. Uh, these washes are representing the sky and the water. And in these two washes, we try to create a gradient, um, a transition. In other words, in the case of the sky, I'm going from a little lighter up above to a little darker on the horizon. horizon. It's a wet on wet affair and by doing this, we create a feeling of transformation, change, and interest. That, that equals interest in painting when you have um, something transitioning. So in both washes, the sky, which was just finished, and now the water that the shacks sit on, uh, they're, I'm using a, a graded wash. In the case of this lower wash, the water, I'm going from a very light area uh, to a very dark area in the foreground. And I'm using two colors. This is a basically a two color exercise using burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. And in uh, putting on these two washes, uh, that, that water wash was started simply with clean water and then transitioned to a really deep hue at the bottom. And you'll notice the strokes were left kind of um, unblended at the bottom. This is to suggest waves. So the two washes in place, we can start to work with uh, some dry technique. The painting's dried. I'm, I'm constructing the, the smaller uh, shapes of land on the left hand side and uh, we'll follow that by some dry brush to create the rocks on the right hand side. Um, using the colors for the moment, mixed on the palette, uh, burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, and thinking very much of a pattern of strokes. This is another concept that I want to introduce you to when you're looking at a complex subject and the rock formation that we see on the right is rather complex. Uh, the artist tries to reduce that to a pattern. A pattern means a series of repeated shapes, or in the case of uh, the rocks, um, a series of repeated strokes. And while we're repeating them, uh, here's the catch, you try to vary the stroke or vary the size of the shape each time. So uh, this is a really useful idea for looking at your motif and simplifying it, reducing it to a pattern of shapes. Well, we've moved on now to the, the fish shacks themselves, and um, I'm painting them directly. I think maybe uh, we would all benefit by drawing in uh, the, the edges of these shacks because they're complex. Uh, the perspective uh, needs to read as something specific, as um, different views of a similar shack. But I'm painting them directly, and what I want you to appreciate here is I'm mixing the color directly on the page. So some areas I'm using a bit of ultramarine blue at a much stronger strength, for example, than was used in the water, or a bit of burnt sienna. And I'm blending them loosely, mind you, loosely into the fish shacks so, so that when it dries, uh, the bright color will come out just a little bit more and it'll be just a little bit more exciting. As a shape, these are very much connected. They're almost silhouettes at this stage. There's not a lot of detail uh, 
Any sort of change in roof color or windows or textures will be added later with dry brush. But at this stage, it's a really important stage, I think, because uh, you're, you're really realizing that first vision of seeing the connections and shapes, not just the divisions, but the connections um, of these shapes. And that is a, a large simplification of what you're actually looking at. So I'm approaching the, the reflection in the same manner. Of course, I want it to um, be a mirror image to some degree of the shack above, but I'm definitely mixing the color on the page and uh, aware of the, the distortions to the shape. In other words, this reflected shape is just a little longer and a bit darker than the original shack that's casting the, the reflection. Same with the one on the right. And these are joined to the reflection of the, of the next shack and the reflection of the rocks. So you can see at this stage, you can see the connection of everything. And uh, the, the surface is still wet. So what I'm doing now is I'm adding some very intense versions of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna sometimes mixed on the palette, sometimes mixed on the paper. And I'm going back to this still wet area to add some important darks under the shack in some of the divisions of the rocks to be reflecting perhaps a darker rooftop or a window or a doorway. This uh, darker, richer mix of colors is used to do that. This will also be dragged into the rock area to further divide some of the rocks and give a richer uh, rendition of the texture. So this is a, um, I guess, a step in learning how to look at your subject as well as how to technically, you know, mix uh, color on the paper. Looking at your subject as a big shape, a join shape, is really helpful for the artist to simplify the motif. And it gives you a little bit of confidence in approaching the, the subject uh, because you are able to sort of see it in one glance and understand it beyond what it is. What that means is you see it as a shape primarily. It might be a fish shack, it might be a vase of flowers, whatever. Uh, you see it as a shape, and this gives you a bit of confidence in placing it on the paper and relating smaller shapes to it. So we're adding some of the dry brush now into the rooftops. I'm using a little bit of a dry technique to make it feel a little more weathered and uh, get some details in places that are interesting. Same with the uh, rock formations, I want to divide them further, um, especially the hollows where, that meet the water. It's a good place to drop a, a strong accent and give it a little more sense of three dimensions. Much easier to add these details after stating that initial shape, that initial, and, and actually initial tone. Another thing you can observe in this this work and in the original photograph is that uh, the tones have been greatly simplified. The, because of the weather, there's not a lot of shadows. The water's calm, so the, sh the reflection is fairly uniform. It's a good subject in that regard because it's uh, already, it presents itself simply. We'll look at another exercise later on in this video that shows a, a different subject. Both, it's also a fish shack but it's much more complex and not as obvious on how to uh, approach it. Well, there's our seagulls. We can't have a fish shack without seagulls because, you know, that's what they, that's their home. They, uh, they need to eat and uh, fish is a good source of protein. So here's the, the finished version. As it's dried, now you can see the color coming out a little more uh, the tonal quality is, 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 has kept that uh, starkness. And another variation where colors were mixed on the page, and you can see how the blue and the brown have uh, 
come forward a little more and given us a, a stronger vibration in the painting. So be patient. Uh, we're going to get into a second exercise, um, a shorter one, but it shows um, approaching this idea of a big shape of simplifying your uh, complex subject, a subject that's not as easy to read uh, in the same method. So here's, here's our motif, a sunny day. We have shadows, we have a fish shack, we have trees coming in from the left side, we have uh, activity in the distance. Very confusing, especially if you're working on location, how do we go about simplifying this? I'm going to, well, first of all, I'm going to work in a grayscale, which is a really um, reliable way to, to begin an approach to your subject. Understanding it in terms of tonal values, taking out the uh, challenge of mixing color, and just thinking of it as tonal values and shapes will help you a lot in coming to understand your most your motif and how you're going to fashion it in a way that gives it a strength and simplicity and uh, let's say readability so that we can understand it on the first glance the photograph was preventing was presenting some confusion hard to discern how to approach it so i've approached this with a um so far a, a simple two-tone painting we're using a uh, a mid-tone for the gray, I'm sorry, for the shack, the trees, the background, the water. We're using white um, for the surface on our rocks and some of the distant uh, smaller shapes. And we see, the, again, the connection of, of these shapes. We see how the trees meet the shack, meet the distant trees, meet the water. This gives uh, an underlying strength to the, to the composition. And it also shows us where we can return for smaller elements that I'm placing now. Um, some of the windows, the foundation, the roof, eaves, uh, stones, and, and other things. I'm placing those with a darker value and uh, able to bring out the independent nature of the shapes. So maybe that's what I'm illustrating here is, is the potential of seeing the shapes as connected shapes and then being able to distinguish them as you see fit, as, you, as your creativity um, would suggest. So I want the shack and the trees to be a background primarily to um, some figures that I'm going to place. I'm going to put figures in this scene uh, towards the end. <clears throat> but I want you to appreciate how the this midground of shack, trees, and um, the water element are connected visually um, and serve as a background because of that. And it, of course, the brushwork is always important to me. Um, this is helping me to create some character in the trees, to uh, get some shadows on the wall. Certainly the cracks across the stone are um, described through brushwork. Now I'm, I'm seeing the front of the shack is a bit too busy. I'm going to um, add some, some details, some sharper details, but I'm also going to at some point uh, drag a wash over the whole thing so that again it's kind of uh, joined to those trees on the left and separated a little more distinctly from the background and tonally becomes a connected element to the um, trees and shadows on the left hand side. At this stage now you can see how it's really pulled out from the sky and the background presenting a strong uh, background element for our any activity that we want to put on these rocks. It could be just shadows. It could be um, more rocks, more definitive shapes of rocks. It could be figures, as I'm going to um, in introduce later. Uh, but at this stage, you can see the, the shapes have come out via connection and via a darker tonal value. 
So I'm dropping in some more shadows to the foreground, isolating that light area through the middle of the painting. And um, tonally, I'm connecting the left side through the bottom and setting up the stage, the area, the area that I want to place the figures. But very much uh, this tonal exercise is helping me to separate light values in the background from the mid value, big mid value through the mid ground. And now my main characters, the dark elements, darkest elements in the shadow uh, appear on the stage. Three figures painted very dark against that mid tone. So I hope this helps you to understand and begin to approach more complex subjects in terms of the big shape.